previously on life. 50% of mothers in Bangladesh are married off by 17.5 years of age. So they're having children when their pelvis is small. The wages of our workers are just enough to go home, eat something, and then go back to the factory. Women are central to the whole issue of development, but for cultural reasons and historic reasons, they've never been given a fair shake. Choosing whether to marry or not, and if and when to have children, is a fundamental human right, enshrined in international law since 1948. But it's a right widely violated in countries around the world. In many African communities, girls are still viewed as commodities, to be married off as early as possible. Once married, a girl forfeits the right to make decisions that affect her own and her children's future. These people are celebrating a wedding near Bahiyadar in northern Ethiopia. The Ethiopian civil code sets 15 as the minimum age of marriage for girls. But in rural areas like this, ignorance of the law is widespread and tradition deep-rooted. Today's bride is just four years old. Just a few miles away, preparations are being made for another marriage. <laughs> Nibret is 11. Tomorrow she'll be handed over to her husband's family. Neither Nibret nor her grandparents, who have raised her since her parents' death, have ever seen the groom. All the arrangements for the marriage have been made by a mediator. <laughs> We don't trust our cattle to last, and one of us could die. So we like to betroth our children now, so they can begin their independent lives. And the other family will also give the children some cattle and some farmland. They too want to see the children established before they die. And we all gain new relatives. Later that night, the groom's party arrives. The groom might or might not be among the dancers, as he does not disclose his identity at this stage. Nibret is kept hidden from view in a nearby hut, chaperoned by her married sister. Though this is normal practice in the countryside, now in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, a group of women lawyers has banded together, determined to enforce the law and change attitudes. Original Georges is a founding member of the Ethiopian Women Lawyers Association. The association started to campaign against child marriage because of overwhelming evidence that the minimum age laws were being abused. People saying that girls um, are not, um, don't get sexual intercourse until the age of uh, 15 is a myth because this girl is only 12, she's already married, she's divorced, and she's selling liquors for her living. Down here, this is um, a 10 year old girl. When she first came to us, we were so shocked that we took her pictures to remind us that there is a lot to do. Early marriage um, is very very rampant in the northern part of Ethiopia. Girls of eight, nine, 10, 11 are married. Um, the parents do that for economic reasons, for alliances with good families, and then because they have no alternative to give to their girl children, if they don't get married early, they think that they, they are, there is nowhere to put them or to give them. So they want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. 
Meanwhile, Nibret's grandfather and the other men are finalizing the marriage contract. The process is supervised by a mediator who represents the family of the groom. Exchanges of property are carefully negotiated and noted. In another part of the village, the groom recovers from the night before and waits with his party. He still has not seen his bride. Just across the compound, Nibret's sisters do their best not to disappoint him when the moment comes. If you could choose the perfect bride, what would she be like? I don't really care what she's like. <laughs> What if she was lazy? I'll just kick it out. <laughs> Are you nervous? Yes, kind of. But are you looking forward to being married? What's there to look forward to? From Barda, we have the case of um, um, a, a bride who was nine and a bridegroom who was 12. On the night of the marriage, the bridegroom, because he was a child, cannot, couldn't break the heim. So his attendants, who, who were adults, told him to poke the bride with an iron. He poked her and she went to hospital and she was there for four or four, four months. I think the physical injury has healed, but what will come in the future, we don't know. Many similar cases end up in Bahirdar's only hospital. Sawarag developed a fistula after her husband made her pregnant. A fistula is when the vaginal wall ruptures. This can lead to life-threatening infections, especially when the reproductive organs are not fully developed. Because girls become incontinent and can no longer have sex, their husbands often abandon them. My parents are dead, and I have no relatives left. I was in this hospital for a year, and no one visited me except the doctors. I hate my life, but when I see the others, I'm grateful, as I'm not as ill as them. Do you think it's possible you're going to go back to your husband? No, I don't want to. I don't want to. The contract has now been agreed and signed by the men, but Nibret remains hidden from the groom while she's handed over to the mediator who will take her by mule to her husband's family. You see, women are some sort of possession to be guarded, to be valued. This is very, very, very deep in our culture. And everything is shrouded in tradition. And all the time women have been hurt, hurt to the point of being, um, I don't know, voiceless or something. There are laws, there are policies, there are something, but on the ground, in actual fact, nothing has moved much. Nibret finally arrives at her husband's village. Her father-in-law waits eagerly. He has not yet seen her. Officially, the church only sanctions marriage over the legal age of 15. We are stopping our fair children from going to school. We are uh, killing their potential. And these girls, when they are getting married, they run away uh, because they are not physically, mentally prepared for the marriage. So they run away, come to big cities, become prostitutes, street children, and maids in somebody's places. It's a very, very harrowing experience to the girls who are married at the early age.
Lebrechtler meets her husband for the first time. Custom dictates she is neither seen nor heard. Throughout the making of this film, she could not bring herself to talk to us. Sometimes it, it, may, it wakes me up in the middle of the night. In Ethiopia, half the populations, half the population are women, and uh, among women, the majority are children. Development cannot happen unless you include the women. And how could we think of the future of Ethiopia as a country in terms of development if you don't do something to the children of today? If you want a parent not to give his girl child in marriage as early as that, you have to give him an incentive. The incentive should be a school nearby. If there is a school nearby and you tell him, instead of giving your girl in marriage, you can send her to school, you have to have a school near it. But Nivret wasn't given the opportunity for education. And as she begins her married life, her new husband takes control. Where are you going to sleep tonight? Right here. With her? Yes. Have you ever slept with a girl before? No, it's my first time. When you see their, 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 those were small children, you don't, you, you sometimes don't know. Uh, you see, they are so helpless. They look at you. Some of them are so poor, and some are really hurt. You can see the, that from their eyes. Uh, some would like to trust you by looking at you, uh, that you could produce miracles to, to, to push their problems away. When you see that, you just boil inside. In Kano, in northern Nigeria, most girls are married by 16. Many marry even younger, sometimes, as in Ethiopia, as young as six. Polygamy is widely practiced here, and a man is allowed to divorce without difficulty. Safia is only in her mid-30s, but has been divorced for 15 years. If you are not married, it is really a big problem. If you are looking for something from somewhere when you are married, you are respected and you get what you want. You go straight ahead with confidence. But if you don't have a husband, you are hesitant wherever you go. So we have to have courage and patience. Safia was married at 12. Her husband divorced her 10 years later. She had no education or means of income, so she and her two children returned to her mother. Of course it hurts. Whenever I think about it, it's the one thing that really hurts. But divorcees like Safia are unlikely to derive comfort from the view of community religious leaders like Muhammad al Hassim. Polygamy has come to solve many of the problems of the society. And that is why Islam enshrines it as part of its principle. Sometimes because of biological factors. A woman, for one reason or another, she has what we call menstrual period. She goes for menstruation. But during such period, sometimes a man has a natural urge for another woman. What does he do? How does he satisfy himself? So Islam says, all right. So a man, if he has more than one wife, then he has a, a possibility to safeguard that interest. Al-Haji Amino is certainly safeguarding his interests. 55 years old, he's a used car dealer, and so far has taken five wives. One died and he divorced another, but he still lives with three of them. Al-Haji has his own room with air conditioning. Each wife has one room in which she lives with her children. His oldest wife, Hawa, has been married to Al-Haji for 30 years. She's borne him 11 children, nine of which have survived. Though she's continued to bear him children, her youngest is just four, 
Alhaji continued to take wives. Hawa has had to learn how to suppress her feelings and live with all this. When Zaja was brought here, to begin with, to be honest, it wasn't very pleasant. We used to quarrel, but later we realized living together was the will of God, because everything comes from God. Then we forgot our differences. The second wife, who passed away, God rest your soul, was even more bitter than me to see yet another new bride, and I always had to calm it down. I said to her, be tolerant, this one is like a daughter to us, but now we are going to share our husband with her. So I said, be calm, be patient. Sadia has given Alhaji a child and is clearly young and fertile, but Alhaji has taken yet another wife. Islam concerns itself about population. Sometimes, because of one reason or another, by the time somebody marries a woman, he finds her barren, and otherwise she cannot bear children. But instead of discarding her, like you discard clothes, Islam then gives permission. You return her as well, you give her the all other social amenities and security. But then if there's another one that can reproduce, then she comes under your canopy. She got a I was brought to this house at 13 when I didn't really know anything. I was brought into a household where the women were all much older than me. I can't look on these women as my co-wives. They are all the same age as my mother. Alhaji refused to take part in any more filming once he learned his wives had spoken to us. I sit in my room and cry and cry. And if I tell my husband, he doesn't believe me. As far as he's concerned, everyone here is living in peace and harmony. But other women know what to do. But I don't know what to do because I'm not as wise as them. Even their children are older than me. This center was set up for girls like Zadia. It was started by Marabello in response to the lack of education for young married and divorced girls. A man of 50 taking up a child of 9 or 10 or 13 years old as a wife, when will he train those children he is bringing to the world? Who is he leaving the responsibilities to? That's what we should ask ourselves. After he has impregnated the woman and the woman has given birth, who takes care of the child? The girl is only 13. No education, no skills to get any income, nothing, nothing. But Myra's views are not endorsed by the establishment and community religious leaders. Muhammad al Hassan chairs regular seminars for Islamic scholars. Polygamy is something from Almighty God. The discussion continued. It wasn't confined to polygamy. The scholars went on to talk about the age at which girls should marry. In the sense that it generates diseases. Islam insists on early marriage so that uh, they grow up to be responsible members of the society. You can marry as old, as, as, as early as seven years old. Experts say there is no authority for this doctrine in the Quran, so we wanted to make sure they really endorse this view of child marriage. So are you saying that you think that little girls of as young as six mm -hmm. are ready for sexual relations with their husbands if the husband so chooses? Exactly. I can give you many anecdotes which had stipulated, uh, stipulated that. that there, is nothing, there is nothing wrong. It's, it's just very straightforward. So th this small girls, they are ready for sex, just as I've mentioned, I've mentioned to you, uh, it, it's explicit. What we advise is that at least let this child have some education, even if it's only secondary school. If she has that basic education, if she wants to go back and make something of her life, she can always go back and make something of her life. But if she has no education, she's blank, no skills, when does she start? I realize the kids here don't go to school. 
They're married off very young. My husband's daughter, who died, was the only one that even went to primary school. I was in the same class as her. Even she was married off as soon as she had finished primary school. Even though some of the husbands promise that after the marriage they will continue schooling, most of them do not keep those promises. We do not encourage early marriage, but if it has happened, it has happened. What do we do now to salvage the situation? And make them feel like human beings, not like some kind of dogs that after the day's meal, you just throw the leftovers to them. Give the girls some empowerment and make them useful to the society. The girls at this center are runaways from early marriages. Divorcees or married girls like Zadia were desperate for an education but forbidden it. They're taught practical skills to give them some income and given lessons in decision-making, leadership, and assertiveness. Don't forget that these girls have been brainwashed from day one. From the day they were put in their cradle, they've been telling them that all you are useful for is marriage. You have no other function in life than to marry and start bearing children. As far as uh, Islam is concerned, a woman has a, has a very fundamental role. One, number one, the duty, her duty, uh, as far as in the matrimonial home is concerned, is giving comfort to the husband. Like example, I have suffered here, everybody has come in, I've, uh, and then there are a lot of uh, tension and so on. If I go back to my house, I needed some comfort. Back at her center, Myra is teaching girls how to be assertive rather than a comfort to men. When a man doesn't have anything to offer and comes home empty-handed, that's the time you have to tread gently when you welcome him. He comes home already upset because he hasn't been able to buy anything for the family. If you start making demands on him, then then there'll be trouble. It's not good just being silent all the time. If you lock it all up inside, you will develop high blood pressure. Really, this woman is just like a mother to us. She's really helped us a lot. It wasn't a man who opened this door. It was her. I'm optimistic in the sense that a lot of the young ones now are fighting back. If you go to the universities now, you will find young girls with their babies strapped on their backs in the university lecture halls. And that's encouraging for me. Some of them will come with their babysitters, and the, the babysitters will be sitting outside with their babies there in the lecture halls. And if I see that is so much beautiful picture in my eyes, I want to go on looking at them. But back at Al Haji's home, the future looks less promising. Hajira, his latest wife, has a new baby. His wives are adapting yet again to expansion in the family. Sadia is pregnant again. Marrying young children is really very bad. What makes it so awful, apart from all the other problems, is that when a girl child is about to have a baby, there is a lot of suffering unless we are very lucky. If a child is married at an early age and becomes pregnant and delivers the baby safely, then she is extremely lucky. When I had my baby, people said it was God's will, and that is why I accepted it. I used to cry every day, but now I'm resigned to my fate.